David is going to be the highest ranking African American male in the history of the Boys and Girls Club movement. Damon, we really wish you the best there in uh, Atlanta. Damon, uh, good luck with uh, your new journey. And to develop something that's considered among the nation one of the top five chief diversity officer programs now in the country. Brother Williams, we're going to miss you here in Madison, Wisconsin. We'd like to breathe life into this community, this institution, our organization. Congratulations. Good luck. I just want to let you know I am so proud of you. For five years, Dr. Damon A. Williams served the University of Wisconsin-Madison community as the Chief Diversity Officer in the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Educational Achievement. On this day, he's celebrated by faculty, staff, students, community leaders, and colleagues as the consummate scholar, administrator, and thought leader in the areas of diversity affairs, inclusive management, organizational leadership, and youth empowerment. During his time on campus, he waved the flag for what became known as inclusive excellence under his leadership. In fact, the National Association of Diversity Officers in Higher Education awarded him the Inclusive Excellence Award for Leadership. His innovative work is celebrated nationwide, including his industry-leading diversity book set, Strategic Diversity Leadership, Activating Change and Transformation in Higher Education, and the Chief Diversity Officer, Strategy, Structure, and Change Management, both currently available on Amazon.com. Having either worked with, advocated for, consulted, or spoken with over 200 organizations, he is widely considered one of the nation's most dynamic and innovative thinkers in the areas of diversity and inclusive management at the university level and beyond. Dr. Williams diligently worked on behalf of 400 employees in his division and managed the budget of nearly $15 million in annual expenditures focused on issues of student leadership, graduation retention, faculty hiring, equitable access, and educational arts initiatives. It's evident Dr. Williams is committed to his purpose to work on behalf of youth near and far. With so much on his plate, he refuses to slow his pace. An alumnus of the Boys and Girls Clubs of Dayton, Ohio, he was recently appointed as the new Senior Vice President of Program Training and Youth Development Services at the Boys and Girls Clubs of America in Atlanta, Georgia. With his wife expecting a new addition to the Williams family, new professional opportunities on the horizon, and a persistent passion for advocacy, the future burns ever so bright for this national front run. As he embarks on this new, dutiful journey, there's no doubt he'll be profoundly missed by the Badger family, yet the voices of the future call out and challenge Dr. Williams to reach for even higher heights. And in his usual Williams way, he's responded with purpose and action. Farewell to the doctor. We do need to congratulate Damon and Keisha on the pending birth of their first child. Is Keisha here? So we wish you, in that regard, uh, a lot of joy and a lot of sleep. <laughs> Probably about three months ago, I was sitting there, I was at the Boys and Girls Club National Office having lunch with our national CEO. So he told me, he said, hey Mike, we're looking for a new CVP. Do you know anybody? So, oh, it's your fault. America's kids are counting on Damon. So, uh, so I called Damon on his phone and I said, Damon, I got the right job for you. He said, Mike, I'm not even looking for a job. I said, dude, it's the senior vice president for Boys and Girls Clubs of America. You don't turn down an opportunity like this. And he said, no, Mike, I'm happy where I'm at. So I said, I got you on speakerphone. I got one of the national board members here. I got a national president on the phone. And by the way, Denzel Washington is uh, in the boardroom with us. I lied about the Denzel part. <laughs> <laughs> so David said, David said, what? And then, uh, so I think we got his attention. And uh, and so they aggressively pursued him. And um, Damon is going to be the highest ranking African American male in the history of the Boys and Girls Club movement. And every time we reached out to him to have uh, his support and his guidance and his wisdom in any 
of the efforts that we were undertaking, he was there for us. He gave me passion to go back to school. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to be back to school to get my master's degree. My name is Linda Bakunta. Um, I'm a PhD student here at the University of Wisconsin Madison. I was the co-instructor for the field course, uh, which Dr. Williams uh, supported. I was part of the field course as also the program director for an NGO, which facilitated the field course. And we have been working to get this opportunity for a really long time on this campus. And we were actually being shut down. Um, so I have felt that. Um, so when we were given this opportunity, we wanted um, people of color to come on our trip. If you speak with a lot of people in the global health department, they will tell you that people of color don't go out as much outside the country. So this is a really big deal. Um, we're very happy to have um, at least four people of color on our trip, so thank you very much. The other reason he's rare is that um, he was the one individual that uh, had the administrative chops as well as the vision, the intellectual capacity, the educational pedigree, uh, as well as the tenacity and commitment to take a uh, division, or rather it wasn't a division, but to take an office and to develop something that's considered among the nation one of the top five chief diversity officer programs now in the country. That's a very difficult thing to do, period, let alone in the course of a five year uh, uh, time. He, he was fearless. Um, I think that's something that should be celebrated. Um, I'm glad I got to work with him, uh, learn from him as a mentor, um, and I hope we stay in contact. He really supported me when I needed someone in my corner. Um, and not to say that I didn't have other people, but he really, really pushed to get me a job when I needed some time off and really supported that decision. And also he was one of our judges at this year's Triple S show, and we're really going to miss you. <laughs> um. I knew I was here for a degree, but when I met with him and we began to work on the Black Men's Initiative Forum, I really realized that, that my purpose here. You have done way beyond what we had hoped. And thank you very much for all the youth that you have served in this community. I remember when we marched up to ask him, we had a microphone, um, and I was just like, you know, I hope everyone can hear us, but it was him, and he was there with some stereos and a microphone to make sure, you know, everyone heard what we said. Um, when it came time to send a Latino delegation to the Wushi Conference in Chicago, you helped us there. Um, when it came time for MGC to do many things, you, you helped us there. Um, when it came time for my fraternity to go places, you helped us there. So you've helped me out um, directly and indirectly so many times. Um, and it, it will be my senior year, and I was looking forward to working with you and doing everything and taking on campus. But I know you'll be moving on to better, better things, and hopefully we can stay connected. And just thank you for everything you've done on campus. Um, as someone said, being a student of color on campus is hard. And knowing that someone was working towards um, the betterment of our people on this campus was um, very grateful. So thank you for everything. We met in D.C. several times. We were actually talking about a whole other project. And one of the things that encouraged me about even coming back to Madison, there were three people. The first one was Lamar Billups, who called me while I was driving on the street in D.C. and told me I needed to apply for this job. Uh, the second one was uh, um, Chuck Taylor. He and Annette Miller and others were trying to encourage me also. And then it was Damon. And it was only because the things that he was telling me that the university was doing, or was planning to do in the community, um, had him, had him you know, being an alumna of the university and being one of their distinguished alumni, one of the few black distinguished alumni I found out, um, I was surprised that they would allow us to do so much. Um, I was also fortunate to be one of the creators of people with Paul Barrows and Walter Lane and Cleveland James and others, and to see what this program has become and how it's grown under your leadership, how you've empowered it with uh, the people that it needs. I saw Carl in here, other folks like that. Um, the way you've taken First Wave and, and Posse program and all these initiatives, I mean, it is unreal. And as someone who has worked nationally in education, I can't think of another university 
or college in the United States that has as robust of a diversity agenda that actually impacts young people in this country. And so, brother, I'm gonna miss you. When I look at him, I'm encouraged for the future. And I feel like uh, Madison's loss is going to be the country's game. As part of the search committee that brought him here, we had high expectations for this position and for Damon. He was different from anyone we had before in that he would use his scholarship as the foundation to bring transformation to this campus around diversity. And in this way, he has moved us far from where we were. The national awards he's won also attest to his ability. He has reorganized divisions to make them more efficient and better protect them from our detractors who have won many battles suggesting that diversity is passe. He has transformed and reclaimed resources absent from the diversity effort here for so long or never here in the first place during one of the worst economic periods in our history. So far from complete. Uh, when I came to UW Madison five years ago, I was uncertain of uh, what this experience would hold. Um, I had attended that other great university that's also in the CIC in the Big Ten. Um, I was coming from the University of Connecticut and I uh, was coming to this institution which had an amazing history and an engagement with these issues and uh, was a bit uncertain where I would find my way and how I'd be able to add value. And, um, and I remember I just dove in with all that I am. And, uh, I asked a special person to dive in with me, and that's my wife, Keisha. The things that stay with me most is uh, not the books that I wrote that I was here, not the articles that I wrote that I was here, not the plans that I wrote that I was here, but it's the stories. It's looking around and seeing my students, knowing that I selected this person in California, or I helped this person to go outside the country, or I helped this person to do uh, things that they didn't think was possible. That's what stays with me. It's the quality of the conversations that I was able to have with leaders, uh, like the first speaker, Steve Stern, and we talk about things we wanted to get done. It's the stories of Adele Brumfield and I on the road, traveling around the country, getting posse scholars from every city known to man. The men and the women who worked with me and my core team were gladiators for me. And I just thank Paul. Oh, I'm gonna wrap my remarks um, by just Looking around the room and thanking all the men and the women, the leaders in this room, faculty, staff, students, community members, undergraduates, graduates, posse people, first place, oh my eyes, unaffiliated students, students who were students and now they're staff, students who were students and now they're grad students, uh, individuals who didn't have pieces before and now they've got them done on the back end, uh, individuals who came from absolutely all over. I just thank you all. Uh, know that I'm going to try to continue to walk in the light of the Wisconsin idea. I'm going to continue to walk in the light of what this great university has helped to impart upon me as other institutions have. And um, I look forward to staying connected to all of you. I'm big on LinkedIn. I'm about to get my Facebook game off, so I look forward to <laughs> Facebook uh, friending with you and definitely linking in with all of you. We've got some more cake and some more wine. It's all paid for, so keep taking part in uh, what we have. And uh, God bless each and every one of you in Long, Wisconsin.
Yeah. Really gonna miss you a whole lot. You did a whole lot of great things here. Um, really excited to be a part of some of that. I'm still here, so you still have some legacy that you've left. It seems like you've been a catalyst all your life. So wherever you go, you make things happen. So things continue to happen for you. Uh, where you're going, I'm sure that great things will begin to happen as well as the things that you started here will continue to press on. Miss you here in Madison, Wisconsin. I know you're not going that far. Atlanta's only an hour and a half flight away from Madison if you got a really, really fast plane. Two hours if you're flying with a plane in the hood. But I'm looking forward to seeing you down there. I will be down there many, many times. Please answer my call when I call. I know you're going to be in that high rise hotel called the Boys and Girls Club back in that top corner office that overlooks the city. But just let a brother give one shot at seeing the view. I look forward to seeing you, brother. Seriously, we're gonna miss you, man, but I know you're not going very far. Brother May, bountiful blessings be with you as you step out and step up and continue to bless so many with the gifts that the Creator and the ancestors have anointed you with. May you continue to radiantly walk with, receive, and Embrace the light of the great Dreams are made to be achieved. Intuition.